Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with Lisa. I'm personal chef Lisa Spampanato, and today we're gonna to do some really fun and easy Super Bowl appetizer ideas. I'm gonna start with the first one, and we're gonna do, since we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers playing in this Super Bowl, we're gonna do a variation of a Philly cheesesteak. We're gonna do a Philly cheesesteak spring roll. So really cool, really easy to just pick up and take to the couch and eat. And it's just got a few ingredients, so you can't beat that. We're gonna start with some roast beef. We're gonna have some cheese. Now, normally in a Philly cheesesteak, some people say it's cheese whiz. Not exactly my favorite cheese. You can use it if you want. You can use shredded mozzarella. I'm gonna use some smoked gouda because that's my new favorite cheese. And then we've got some onion. And I'm using a red onion because it's a little bit more mild and a little bit sweeter. And then I've got some egg roll wrappers. And then we're gonna deep fry them. So if you don't have a deep fryer, it's really easy to do it on the stove top in a nice big pot with some oil. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get started first by cutting up my onion. And I wanna dice it into some you know, small pieces. I don't want slices. You could do slices, but it makes it harder to eat. So let's get rid of that end there. And let's get rid of that end there. Ooh, it's a tough onion. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. And let's peel this guy. And you can see they're nice little pieces because we want them to mix in with the roast beef and the cheese and be easy to eat. So I've got a nice dice going on here. I'm gonna put these in my bowl until I'm ready to saute them and then we'll get started cutting up the roast beef. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut up some of this cheese and let me just clarify that even though Philadelphia's not playing in the Super Bowl, Pittsburgh is still in Pennsylvania. So we're still gonna call them Philly cheesesteaks if that logic makes any sense to you. If it makes you happier, you can call them Pittsburgh cheesesteaks, okay? Okay. So the cheese is all cut up. Let's go ahead and get our roast beef all chopped up into nice little pieces. Again, this is just so easy. You can use roast beef from the deli counter. I mean, if you wanna take the time to roast a whole, you know, prime rib or beef tenderloin or whatever you like and slice it, you can, but honestly, why? It's very expensive and this is, the work is all done for you. All you have to do is cut it up. Just makes life a lot easier. Okay, those are nice small pieces. Let's put that aside. Whoop, one escaped. Okay. Now that that's all done, I'm gonna make sure that my deep fryer is up to temperature, which it is, it's nice and smoking hot, and all I have in here is some vegetable oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you like. You could use canola oil, you could use peanut oil. I kinda of stay away from the peanuts because of allergies for people, you just never know, so. All right, let me put this in the sink and we'll start sauteing up some of those onions so we can make our spring rolls. Okay, so I've gone ahead and got our pan nice and hot and I've got some regular butter in here, just melted it down a little bit. Let me get the flame back on. Because I don't really wanna saute these so that they're crunchy, I kinda wanna let them caramelize a little bit. So we're gonna get all the sugar, the natural sugar out of there and they're gonna get nice and soft and, and golden and yum. Okay, got a nice sizzle going there. And caramelizing onions takes a little bit longer than just sauteing them because you don't want to keep them on a high heat for too long. Otherwise, they'll burn. So, I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to add any salt to this right now. Oh, there's a really big piece in there. We don't want that one. So let's get that out of there. Um, because if you add the salt, it's just going to draw more water out and that's going to stop it from caramelizing properly. So, we're just going to wait on the whole seasoning thing and then we'll season with salt and pepper close to the end. All right, so let me just let these go. I'll cut that flame down to medium, and we'll let it go for a little bit. So we've taken a shortcut and uh, just gone ahead and caramelized these while you guys weren't watching. And the onions are all done, and I'm gonna go ahead and add to that the cut up roast beef from before. Okay, ooh, there's one piece I didn't cut up. And let's add in some of that cheese, that's smoked Gouda in case you missed that before. And again, you know what? You can use any kind of cheese you like. If you like the cheese whiz that they normally use in that, that's great. Just gonna mix it all up. You can use cheddar, you can use provolone, which they also use sometimes. You can use mozzarella. It's whatever you like. Don't make a special trip to the store just to change out the cheese, that's silly. All right, so we're mixing this all in together. Got a nice little mixture going. And then, with these egg roll wrappers, and you can get these they have them in any grocery store. Sometimes they're over by the dairy section, sometimes they're over by the fresh herb section. Doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason, you just gotta look for them. 
and it's almost like a pasta sheet, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna take one of these and spoon some of my mixture in here. Okay, not too much because you wanna be able to close it. And I'm just gonna fold, I don't know if you guys can see that, corner up, corner up, almost like a little envelope. Pinch it and roll it, okay? So I'll make a bunch of these and then we'll get them into the deep fryer. So we got these in the deep fryer and I'm just gonna give them a little turn just to make sure that it's all getting coated and they look pretty good. So we're gonna let them go until they're golden brown and then remove them and I'll put them on a paper uh, napkin over a tray and let them drain a little bit. Let's cover them so they can cook, okay. Our spring rolls are all done frying up in the deep fryer, so I've taken them out and I've put them on a rack over a paper towel. Just kind of let them drain a little bit, let the grease get out of there, because you don't want all that grease, even though it's really good. And I've let some cool down a little bit, so let's cut one open and see how yummy they look. And when I cut these, especially when I do these for parties and for clients, I cut them on an angle, or what we call on the bias, because then they just look nicer. It's a nicer presentation. So let's give that a little cut and see the yummy goodness in there. Can you guys see that? And then, when I put it on a plate, I can stand them up like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let the rest of these cool and we'll get started on our next recipe. So I've got my egg rolls chilling over on the table, literally, just letting them cool down a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and do another second, really super easy appetizer for Super Bowl. And this one is basically, it's called a chili cup. And you may have seen it, you may not have, but it's super, super easy. And I've got some homemade chili. This is actually my non-award winning JTV's In It To Win It chili um, that I made a big batch of and froze some. I always have some in my freezer because we love it. And I'm using what's called uh, Recipe Creations. It's basically uh, the, the Pillsbury Crescent Dough. And now they make it in one big sheet so you don't have to pinch all the ends together. So this is a great thing to keep in your fridge too. I'm gonna go ahead, I've got a round cookie cutter. I've got a couple of different sizes and what I do is I just take one that I think will fit my mini muffin cup and hold it over to see what size I really need. And I'm leaving the deep fryer here by special request because I'm gonna bake these in the oven but maybe we'll make some little pockets and throw them in the deep fryer too. I mean, as long as it's out. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these circles and they're gonna go right into my muffin tin, just like that. And I've got my, whoops. I've got my oven preheated to 375 degrees already. It's been going away there while we were doing other stuff. Okay. And with my chili that's now defrosted, I'm just gonna fill up these cups just a little bit. You don't want them overflowing so much. Because remember, this is gonna be like one bite. This would be really great if you had like some pulled pork even or some shredded barbecue chicken would go nice in this. Mix in maybe some fresh corn salsa. All kinds of different things you can do with it. Can you tell I've really thought about this? Okay, almost done. Whoop, little guy's coming out there. Okay, okay, and one more. Okay, into a 375 degree oven, and we'll be right back with it. So this is a little experiment. I was gonna do some little mini empanadas and put them in the oven, but at the request of Andy and Brandon, we're gonna make like little chili raviolis and stick them in the deep fryer and see what we get. So, so far, they're going together pretty well. And I've cut little circles, well actually bigger circles, and I'm just kinda laying them on top and then closing them around the edge with a fork. I'm trying not to get the chili seeping out, but we'll see how we do. One. Let's do two at a time. And they're frying away. All right, we'll let those go for a little bit. They're probably gonna puff up and float up to the surface when they're ready. So we've gotten everything out of the deep fryer and we've got our chili cups out of the oven. And they went in for about 12 to 13 minutes. Uh, just remember to pre-spray your muffin tin before you put them in. And I've gone ahead and garnished these with some sour cream and some Colby Jack cheese. 
And these are our uh, Philly cheesesteaks, even though it's Pittsburgh playing, still Pennsylvania. And then these are the experiments. They came out almost like a, like a patty cake or like a, like a donut, but filled with chili. So that was a really interesting thing, and they actually look pretty good. So if you like these recipes or any other recipe, please contact us at viewermail at jtv.tv, or feel free to contact me at inthekitchen at comcast.net. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on In the Kitchen with Lisa.